Hello, hello. So today we are going to have a look at BigQuery variables. BigQuery variables are useful if you have, for example, one-off analysis and you have the same date in multiple queries. And now instead of like changing this in all the queries, you would change it centrally, hopefully, to also apply to every subsequent SQL. Um, BigQuery variables are part of the procedural language, which means that we will quickly dive into the procedural language. However, this is not a video about BigQuery's procedural language. We will probably dive deeper into this at another time. But anyways, before we dive deeper into the code, um, subscribe to the channel somewhere here, press the thumbs up, um, or check out the BigQuery playlist of advanced concepts somewhere here around. With that being said, let's dive deeper. We will start off by looking at Google and typing in BigQuery variables. That's the most obvious search that we can do. And the first result that I can see here already, and you see that I've clicked on it, otherwise the link would have been a different color, is the procedural language from BigQuery. And now, of course, the question is like, I typed in BigQuery variables, but uh, the first result is BigQuery procedural language. It's because it belongs and it's connected together, as I said in the intro. Anyways, we click on the link to see what we are actually looking into. And let me move you a bit into the fold here and see like, okay, procedural language. There is uh, a lot of documentation on what to do. You see it on the right here that there are a couple of commands and the procedural language is nothing else than sort of a programming language. In this case, you don't do maintenance tasks in in another programming language, but you can do it in BigQuery. So for example, the creation of tables or something that we also looked at in another video where it's about um, how to do recursive joins or how to do recursive joins on specific variables and, and things that you would like to do. And so there's a lot of there's a lot of cool things that you can do and that you can read through the documentation and that we will cover for sure at some point. Nevertheless, we are looking at declare and set today. So declare and set means, okay, I declare a variable and set means I set a variable. So pretty straightforward, right? So there are a couple of drawbacks and a couple of points to pay attention to, but we will see this in a minute as well when we look into the BigQuery editor. In the editor, we are going to do the following. So let's say I have my normal table here, which is like dwh main and I say orders and I execute this. And you should see here there's a table which is saying, okay, I have a specific reporting date, subscription link, platform, product name, etc, etc. It's not super interesting for us right now because we want to cover a specific use case. So for example, if I now want to say, um, I would like to have a specific reporting date, I would say, I would like to have the 1st of September, 2022. I get the 1st of December, right? uh, 1st of September. So perfectly fine. Let's say I would like to also look at a query that I have in my sessions, or actually my table is called traffic. And in this case, I also want to have reporting date equals 2022-09-01. Sorry, of course, this doesn't work because first of all, I have to do a semicolon in here and I only want to execute this part. And I see now, okay, I do have my query and I do have this result. Now my, my superior comes and says, Hey, look, uh, we would, they, these are splendid tables, they're perfect. Uh, but can you do the same for us in, with the second of, <laughs> of, of uh, September? And of course, like, it's not, it's not like you would, you would normally approach the situation, but we are just like building up a case here, right? So in this case, I would have to go and say, like, I changed this now to the second, and I changed this also to the second, and then I'm fine. So imagine this being more than two tables. Uh, we would have to change multiple tables in this case. And this is also where BigQuery variables come in. So if you remember, we have two keywords. One is declare and the other one is set. And we have to we have to first declare a vari variable. So declaring means that we give it a name and we give it a data type. And we can also give it default values. We'll cover this in a second as well. But in this case, I would just say, let's say I say time frame as date. So I gave it a name, that's the name and that's the, the, the data type. And if I now want to give this a specific value, I can say set time frame equals 2022 09 02. 
and BigQuery is smart enough to take this as a date. And if I want to replace now my reporting date in here, I can just write time frame, time frame. I can also just write time frame in here. So in this case, I need to execute, of course, everything because everything needs to be declared in the scope. And if I execute this one, I do have my orders based on the 2nd of September, hopefully. Let's see. So, yeah, exactly. So you see, like, I have seven records for all different platforms and subscription links. And it's, everything is based on, this, on the 2nd of September. So that's the first part. And that's pretty, pretty straightforward, right? So let's say I would like to do this on a different on a different level in this case let's say i would like to also have this on a platform basis so oops declare and the same platform platform and we say it's a string and then i say set platform equals android also always don't forget the, the semicolon at the end because uh, otherwise it doesn't work and now i get an error and the error is saying Variable declaration are follow are only allowed at the start of the block of the script. So that sounds a bit cryptic, but what it means is that I can only declare my variables at the very top. Right? So declared. Now no errors. You don't see it. Let me. So perfectly fine. No errors. Now going back to our query, I can first of all everything works out fine. I can execute this, but I haven't filtered anything yet. So let's say we run into our next edge case, which is, I would say, end reporting, no, end platform equals platform, right? So we see like it's the same name and surprisingly, it will give us very strange results, right? So remember, we are looking for the Android, for the Android platform on the 2nd of September. But if I now look at my query, I see, okay, I have all platforms. Turns out that um, the table scope is is more important than the variable scope in this case, meaning that if I if my here basically say we are platform equals platform and platform always equals platform because platform iOS for this row is also platform iOS for the same row, meaning that uh, it's a good convention to always abbreviate or like prefix this with an underscore, right? So we underscore we prefix both, then of course we have to change it in here, and now surprise surprise also in here and in here and now we don't compare platform with platform anymore but we compare platform with underscore platform so smart us we have now circumvented the rule of that these have the same like naming conventions so meaning that if i execute this now i get my expected result which is only android so super cool right meaning that if I now want to go one level deeper, I can also say, I don't need to declare it here in here. I can also say there's a default value. So in this case, I would just say default, no, default Android. Now I have to, I don't have to declare this one here. So I can just do this. And of course I get the same results because we are good on what we're doing. We get Android, right? Um, this is also like where it's, where it's a bit more complicated is always like with more complex data structures. In this case, let's say we want to declare. Oh wait, let's first let's first get rid of this error here because of the time frame. So we want to declare. In this case, we say platforms, right? So I'm not looking for a specific platform anymore. I'm looking for platforms. Mm, let me keep this one. And and the way how BigQuery works with like array structures, I cannot just say array. I have to define the data type of the array. And in this case, I know it's a, it's an array of strings. So now if I want to set my platforms variable, so remember it's platforms, then we can still say it's, uh, let's say Android and iOS. So we are literally like we have three platforms, Android, iOS and web. And now we want to exclude web by doing this. And if I now say, let me, let me do the following. We are now saying, of course, we comment this one and we say end platform in oh, platform, plat, oh, platform in platforms 
we will get an error. It says, okay, inspected input got syntax. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so we get an error because I forgot to put a semicolon here. But if we do this, it says, ah, syntax error, expected a parenthesis open or keyword unless, but got identifier platforms. So in this case, we can very easily solve this because BigQuery already gave us a hint, which like we just have to say, okay, we want to unnest this. And now if I execute my declaration, everything hopefully works fine. Exactly, so I have only iOS and Android for this specific day and for all the subscription intervals I have here. And that's, in a nutshell, is already what we wanted to cover. Um, of course, this is a bit cool, like you can do, this is all, com and you can combine this with session mode, right? So, meaning I can, I can use the session mode in here. Let me move this, I can activate the session mode and let me save. And then I have a super powerful thing where I only need to execute something once and still declared. If you want to know more about session mode, check out the video that I have about session mode and temp tables, which is super interesting. If you don't know, uh, then you certainly know now then afterwards. Um, and that's about that's about it. So if you like this, leave a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel as, as said before, there is a BigQuery advanced checkout. Uh, checkout? There's a BigQuery advanced checklist. Not checklist, but playlist. So playlist is it. Um, check out this one. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't uh, and leave a thumbs up and thank you for, for your time. <laughs> See you later. Bye bye.